Shalom Rastafari. As we are approaching our one of our most holy times and seasons, and this is Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, and this year, um, 2011, from sunset of October 7th um, to nightfall of October 8th, and this now also corresponds with uh, with the Shabbat or the Sendet which is the Sabbath day. This makes this a, a particularly important scene that this is the last Yom Kippur before 2012. And there's already a lot of prophetic signs and there's been prophecies and predictions from many different cultures, um, from many different uh, spiritual traditions concerning 2012 and the present time that we're moving into, it's very important for us to um, discuss the, the power of prayer, how, how prayer is, is very, very important and is crucial and essential. And brothers and sisters, one must develop a, a prayer a prayer life and a prayer a relationship with prayer, both individually as well as collectively. And this particular message that we would like to um that we would like to share. Um hold on for one moment. That we would like to share on uh on, on, on prayer is extremely important. Especially consider what we have been um teaching on and, and sharing on and um in particular this will be a pre hopefully we'll be able to record a more um, in depth, like with the shofar message, and we give thanks to the brothers and sisters who were able to receive that particular message on 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 the shofar and the importance of the shofar and the yom teruah and the the yamim noraim. And in this line of um, fall festivals, the next up is what's coming up in about a day or so. And by actually, uh, it'll be about a day, and that will be the Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur is the is the Hebrew, the Day of Atonement, and it's the it's the holiest and it's the most solemn day of the year for for we as Hebrews and as Beit Israel and as as Black Jews and as other Jews and those who are of the faith. It is one of the holiest and most solemn. Of days and and its central theme and message is atonement, 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 as well as repentance. And now Hebrews and we as Black Jews traditionally observe and are to observe this holy day, this Kedus Ken, with a 24 hour of of fasting, as well as intensive prayers often spending most of the day when there are the established mikorab, and we as black Hebrews don't have many established mikorab, which is in translation would be the synagogues. We don't have many established synagogues, so we would not suggest if you're not already a member or attending certain synagogues just to show up then. But um, it's, it's the idea of spending the, the 24-hour period in the holy Space, which which is spiritual, which is keenly spiritual. It's not material. It's firstly spiritual, of our heart and our mind. But when there are established mikorab or or synagogues, we spend that time in fasting and intensive prayer. Now, Yom Kippur, it completes the annual period known in in Judaism and known to we as the black Jews as the high holy days or what's known as the Yamim Noraim, the Yamim Noraim. Now, just to give a, a little bit of background and part of this message, we want to say we, we want to pray for our condition as humanity, and not just ourselves as black Hebrews or black people, but, but this, this, this whole 
uh, all those who dwell on the earth. Let's put it like that. All those who dwell on the earth because we are bound to be headed for some perilous days and days of tribulation. And we might not have the opportunity to communicate these messages. So we don't know what changes may be. This whole internet and everything like that may be cut off. So if this is, we have to look at this, this is a day of atonement and we are praying and we are fasting that we receive that atonement. Now, many as um, so-called Christians will say, well, they already have that in Jesus. Yet our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he kept this. He recognized this. And these, these are the holy days of his father, our father. So when Revelation says about keeping the commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, this is one of those commandments and those testimonies of our black Lord and Savior. And it's unfortunate that many within the so-called church have lost sight of that Judeo foundation and what Christ has said. He said, you worship, you worship that which you know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of Judah, of Moa and the Imma Negeda Yehuda, of the conquering line, the tribe of Judah. So this particular message is a message of saying we should pray for our president. We should pray for our so-called rulers and leaders, uh, even the secular rulers and leaders, recognizing the, the power of prayer, you know what I'm saying, and recognizing who we are as well as a people. It becomes even more incumbent upon us to pray, and this is a time of prayer as well as it's a time of fasting. First of all, Yom Kippur is the 10th day of the month of Tishrei, of Tishrei, and according to the Hebraic traditions, Ha Elohim, Hashem, the true God, Baruch Hu, blessed be He, He inscribes each person's fate for the coming year, for the coming year in a book, and this book is known as Yehiwet Metzhaf, um, or the Book of Life the Book of Life, on the Rosh Hashanah or, or the Yom uh, Teruah, which is the Day of Trumpets, the Festival of Trumpets, which other Jews call Rosh Hashanah. We, we've discussed that. Um, so look at our Rosh Hashanah, Rastafari Rosh Hashanah postings where we discuss certain details about that. And there's a waiting period. There, 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 there's this waiting period. We can call it similar to law and, and courts and, and the whole legal system in the sense of there is a, like an arraignment period and there's a certain time of a waiting period. And we wait until Yom Kippur. You know, saying Yahweh waits until Yom Kippur. And we also are in these days of awe as we are waiting to Yom Kippur for the sealing when the verdict is sealed. The verdict is sealed. On Yom Kippur. Now, it is during the days of awe that we as Hebrews try to amend his or her respective behavior, as well as we should seek forgiveness for, for the wrongs that are done against Hashem, the wrongs that are done against Ha Elohim, against the true God, the, the Bain, the Bain Adam. Le Makon, and against other human beings, the Bain Adam, Le Havero, Le Havero. Now, the evening, what's known as the evening and the day of um, Yom Kippur, are set aside for public as well as private petitions. Bamarinya and Namhark, we call these, these petitions Abetuta, Abetuta, the Abit, Abit how we call on Adonai in prayer, Abit, his father, our father, O oh, father of the house. So the Abituta, the petitions, as well as con confessions of, of, of guilt. They are the confessions of guilt. And, and, and this is also a time to confess. This is a time of self-recognition. You understand? Time of introspection. At the end of Yom Kippur, one considers oneself, 
going through and passing through this, and at the end of Yom Kippur, one may consider himself as being absolved by Hashem if one has done the proper the proper preparation of their heart and their mind, their heart and their mind in the ten days of awe and in hearing the trumpet on Yom Teruah. Now, Yom Kippur, the prayer services, they include several unique aspects. One is the actual number of prayers, unlike a regular day, which has three prayers. A regular day in, in the Hebraic way has three prayers, the evening prayer, the Ma'ariv, or the Ma'ariv, the Shacharit, the morning prayer, and the Mincha, which is the afternoon prayer, or a Shabbat, or a, a, a Yom uh, Tob, a Yom Tob, a good day prayer, which have four prayer services, which are the Ma, Ma'ariv, Ma'ariv, the Shacharit, the Musaf, and the additional, which is the additional prayer, and the mincha. Now, the Yom Kippur has five prayer service, the Ma'ariv, the Shacharit, the Musaf, the mincha, and the Ne'illah, the Ne'illah, which is a closing prayer. Now, the prayer services also include public confessions. Now, we find this to be the very root of true Christina or the true messianic way, true Christianity, the true messianic way that there are the public confessions of sin, or what's called the vidui, you understand, and a unique prayer dedicated to the special Yom Kippur Avoda, which is the service, Avoda, Avoda, of the Kohen, the Kohen Gadol, or the high priest. Now, our high priest is our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach in the temple, the holy temple of Jerusalem, which is not physical temple, but is that same spiritual temple that we spoke about even within Revelation um, chapter 3, um, just a little bit earlier. But this particular message here, and we hope to go over what we went over in more detail, speaking about Yom Kippur, hopefully within the time that, that we have um, between now and Yom Kippur, seeing that it is sunset on October 7th and nightfall, between sunset October 7th and nightfall October 8th. But this particular message was to say we should pray for, pray for Obama. We should pray for our kings, our leaders, and our rulers. And here in First Timothy chapter 2, which has 15 verses, whether we'll be able to get through all the 15 verses right here and right now, is another matter, but what we like to do is at least touch on this particular aspect. We should, we should pray for our president. We should pray for our leaders and pray for these so-called rulers. You understand? And there's an important reason. This doesn't mean that whatever ill or wrong deeds they have, unless they repent, you understand, they still have to um, pay the price, as it were. You understand? But coming from us, it's important, especially at this time, seeing, seeing the global situation, the situation of all of us on the face of this planet Earth, especially us as the chosen people, as the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as the black sheep of the family, need to understand the importance of prayer. So let's go through this um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, which is uh, a prayer and the divine order of the sexes both are dealt with in this particular chapter. So uh, stay tuned for this particular reasoning here. All right? Shalom Rastafari.